Well, it, you know, as we talk about as we talk about this series coming up now, the Cardinals have not announced their starter uh, for tomorrow yet. Uh, the Cubs have announced that Trevor Williams is going to be starting tomorrow, and then you've got Alzale versus Wainwright, or I'm sorry, Hendricks versus Wainwright uh, on thir- on Wednesday, and then on Thursday, um, Alzale versus Kim. So, you know, it, to me, just listening to those lineups. Um, the Cardinals stand a pretty good chance on Wednesday and Thursday uh, with Kim and Wainwright to bring home a victory. And, um, you know, the Cubs pitching rotation is still, you know, at some level questionable. Uh, but, uh, I, you know, when, when you talk about the, the, um, the Cardinals and the moves that they're making and all of that stuff, it, it brings me to this, this yearbook that, yeah. caught my eye in my in my cubs room because you know it had these autographs on it and we'd had the conversation about your hat and i was opening it up and there's an article in here that uh you know so this is from 2012 epstein hire has cubs fans giddy so you're thinking about you know that that's the timing of this and then it's got a section in here about the top 10 uh prospects and they're talking also in here about new faces and one of those new faces uh, that's in here in 2012 is a guy by the name of Anthony Rizzo. And, and so, um, and I, I bring this up just because I turn the page a couple of pages and I go, okay, uh, Cubs top 10 prospects. This is not an easy business by any means. Here's the number one prospect in the Cubs organization in 2012. Brett Jackson. <laughs> okay, have you heard of Brett Jackson? I have not. No, we we called him Action Jackson Jackson when he was uh, uh, drafted by the Cubs in the first round uh, back then, and um, he played exactly two years of Major League Baseball, one for the Cubs where he batted close to two hundred, and then one for the Diamondbacks. And I don't know what Brett Brett Jackson is doing today, uh, and whether there was an injury involved or anything like that. But the number two prospect was a guy, a young guy, <laughs> by the name of Javier Baez. And yeah. so when I look at those two prospects, and I'm going to go down the list here for the prospects in 2012 because I think it's really interesting. There's a guy by the name of Matt Caesar, who... I can never pronounce his name. Is it Sugar? Is it Zucker? I I don't know. Anyway. Oh uh, yeah. I, you remember you remember Matt, right? Yeah. You know, I remember. World Series guy, great artist. Okay. Um and then the guy named the number four guy is a guy named Trey McNutt. A right handed <laughs> pitcher. Number five, Dylan Maples. There's a name you've heard. Okay. Wellington <laughs> Castillo. Catcher. I've heard of him. Yeah. Ralphiel Dolis, a right-handed pitcher, number seven. Junior Lake. You remember Junior Lake at number eight. Josh Vitters at number nine. And then number ten, this is really an interesting one that I think you'll appreciate given the current time. Dan Vogelbach. <laughs> who now is playing for the Brewers organization yep. and uh, I think is might be on the IL right now. But isn't it interesting to hear those names associated with the Cubs in 2012 as the top 10 prospects? Because out of those top 10 prospects, a grand total of two, I'm going to give you three, really worked out. Baez, Caesar and Maples, right? Now, a lot of people will remember Junior Lake uh, because he had some huge home runs and, you know, was a powerful guy. But where's Junior Lake now? Uh, you know, where, where are some of these other guys? Where's Josh Vitters? Where's Rafael Dolce? I, You know, so it's not an easy business by any means. This trade that the Cubs have with Atlanta, with Jock Peterson, uh, and and because uh, people are going, who's this first baseman, and what he's batting two thirteen or something like that in in 
A-class ball? Why are we trading? That's the nature of a prospect, isn't it? Yeah. You're, maybe uh, maybe <clears throat> they're a possibility. If you're doing it right, you're trading for not what they've done, but what you think they can do, right? Right. And that's what a prospect is. I think the Cardinals' number one position prospect, um, and I was I texted you this, um, oh, what's Nolan Gorman? Right. Who I think is our future second baseman because Arenado is going to be playing third base for the foreseeable future. Right. Um, was he, he went on a tear like over the his last couple games i think he had a couple home runs had five rbis but i think that bumped his average up to like two he was only hitting like 220 something in 10 games at triple a or something they had they had just called him up to triple a yeah um so and that's the cardinals top prospect so this guy you said is hitting 216 i i would almost put zero stock into that that right now like right give it some time give him some time in the organization give him some time to improve and we'll see what happens i mean but they obviously targeted certain i mean they don't just make these trades for you know prospects they don't think are going to pan out so right right we'll see and it, and they, they if they're going to do this and i could talk about how they shouldn't do it but if they're gonna do it you know then yeah build up the farm system and try to put together a team that is going to be another 2016 caliber team right um but we'll see i think i think what they're going to do is i think they're going to keep Contreras, and i think they're going to keep uh, rizzo because i think those might be the two cheapest guys to keep if i'm just thinking out loud in my head uh right. And I think they're going to try to build around those two guys for the next three to five years. And may, we'll see. We'll see. But I, I no, definitely think no. Kimbrell, Baez, and Bryant are the most likely to get traded for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you sent me the link uh, the other day to something that says that the Cubs, I think it was just Saturday, uh, on MLB rumors that the Cubs will try to extend Rizzo and Baez before um, talking trade. So, uh, you know, we can we can hope that that's going to be the case. And I think you've got to hold on to Contreras. Con yeah. Contreras, yeah. Contreras is the uns unsung hero um, of the Cubs to me. He, he brings uh, an element to the game that is – and he's still developing uh, as well. Um you know, when you start talking about the age of some of these guys, of course, you're looking back at a 2002. This is almost 10 years old already. Yeah. 10 years old. Crazy. That's that's yeah. just crazy. And and so the longevity of a Major League Baseball player, um, you know, that has to come into the conversation, I think. Uh, you know, Rizzo's, what, 31 years old. Um, you know, so he's got eight, nine years left. You know, I mean, at, typically. Probably at right? best, you know. Probably, yeah. Like, especially, especially with his, uh, you know, back issues, um, and then you've got, uh, let's see, Wilson Contreras, who is um, twenty nine years old. So, you know, twenty nine sounds a lot better than thirty one, <laughs> doesn't it? You know, yeah. I mean, it, yeah. it's only two years apart, but. But well, I mean, sounds gold, a lot different. And uh, if if uh, the the Cubs trade Brian or one of these guys, just I think it's a comparable trade. I think the, the when the Cardinals traded for Paul Goldschmidt, they gave up Luke Weaver, who was a major league starting pitcher. Right. They gave up Carson Kelly, who was our backup catcher, but who was long hailed as. Yachty's replacement but Yachty never got bad so he never played basically and I think a few other I'd have to double check but a few other prospects too so they got some major league talent in return for those guys right right so I mean it's possible that that also happens with the Cubs and they you know they plug a few holes and 
with with these trades they make some lateral moves and maybe even yeah. provide some depth for the club in the future because there's more than one way to build a team too so oh yeah oh yeah so I, I, you know i think you you have to trust you have to trust the organization um the cubs have put on i mean there's no arguing that they've had success the last 10 years um you know, 2016, wow, oh, six years, seven years, okay, seven, eight years, right, of, of pretty pretty regular success. Um, can't argue with that. The, it's interesting to me that the biggest name on the trade uh, front for Chris Bryant right now is the New York Mets. Um, that they're showing interest in Bryant. Uh, I, you know, I don't know what the Mets have in their organization, uh, but that that could get interesting. Um, so yeah, the, the I, yeah, Mets are, yeah. if the Cardinals were in and, and the Cubs were in the uh, the NL East right now, yeah, they would be I think three and a half games out. Yeah, three and a half yeah. games out. Yeah. So the Mets are forty eight and forty two. And it's just yeah. so interesting what makes one team a buyer and what makes another team a seller, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And, and, um, it has and contracts, to contracts have so much to do with it. Yeah. Um, and so I, like I said, I haven't looked into the Cubs financial situation, but yeah, I would assume that they're probably thinking that it's going to be almost impossible, if not next to impossible to build a winning team. If you resign all of these guys, which, right. You know, you could argue, well, you're the second highest, you know, mate earning right. team in the baseball, you know, like right. in a big market. And if you bring these guys back, you'll continue that. And I guess you have to balance the two. I guess you have to balance uh, what's a responsible decision for the organization. And whereas what's going to draw in the crowd so we can continue to make money, you know? Right, right. I think, I, you know, I, I think it's interesting that we're, you know, even now still talking about the Cubs. Last episode or one of the most recent episodes showed you the, the W. And uh, to say that the sell-off has begun, well, the, to me, the sell you know, we've, we've brought in and, and, and given away or traded away uh, a lot of players over the last several years. I mean, so... You know, I think that the Cubs may be in their back pocket just relishing all the talk about the trade stuff because what they're thinking is, no, you know, we've been working on this for quite some time. There's a reason we gave you Darvish to the Padres for prospects, along with Victor Carantini. There's a reason we non-tendered Kyle Schwarber. There's a reason, you know, you you can go down the line and, and look at some of those moves and um, and, you know, there's a reason John Lester's now playing with the Nationals. Uh, you know, they're, those huge names. And when you talk about, um, you know, just the, the sentimentality aspect of it, all of those guys have some sentimentality. Hey, Jake Arrieta, let's not forget that he was involved in some kind of trade, Right. Um, when, when, when he went away for a period of time and then came back as kind of a cheap arm for the Cubs this season. So it's not that they haven't been making moves uh, to build the organization. I think some people talk as if, well, if they, don't, if they still have Baez and Bryant and Rizzo and Contreras, then they're not making big moves. No, I, I don't think that's necessarily true. I think that there's a lot of moves that have been happening that people aren't seeing or don't understand the full complexities of. And that's just, you know, my ignorant <laughs> position on it. Yeah. And so, I, I, I bet you, if you went back and I sp especially if you look at the Quintana trade, right. You remember when they brought in Jose Quintana? Yeah. Um, yeah. I bet you look back at that trade with the White Sox and go, I wish we could have that one back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah. So just because you're trading for a big star doesn't right. mean that it's going to pan out because he was 
a big time pitcher that you guys brought in to try to help you guys win another one, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, and remember when you guys had Cole Hamels and you brought him in on a one year deal? Yeah. yeah cool. I, was, I would really love point. Cole Hamels to be on the card or somebody like Cole Hamels to be on the Cardinals right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which I don't even. I think Cole Hamels is. Is he with the Braves? Is he hurt? I don't. I don't even know where yeah, he I'm is. I'm not right sure now. what his status is right now. Uh, but man, I just all the players. I mean, it kind of made me jealous as a Cardinals fan. All, all the players that you guys were able to bring in, um, starting with. I think what really started it off was that that off season with uh, Hayward and John Lester when you brought those mm -hmm. two guys in. Um, which at the time I was uh, incredibly upset that Hayward would go from not only leaving free agency, but go to the division rival, you know, but you know, that's, that's turned out to be a dud of a contract too. And then right. don't worry, the Cardinals followed it up with stealing Fowler away in a similar right. type deal, uh, which also did not pan out. So um, it's just, yeah, it's just interesting. How old is you want to hear you want to hear something interesting about Cole Hamels? Sure. Just pulled up an article that's two days old, July 17th, 2021, written by Nathan Ackerman. Apparently, Cole Hamels held a much anticipated showcase for interested teams in Frisco, Texas on Friday. And interested teams, there were many. Twenty clubs had representatives there. Um St. Louis being one of them. I would love, I would love, and, I mean, I don't really care what he has left. I mean, if he can just pitch five innings and throw strikes, I'd bring him in. Well, he threw two separate bullpen sessions, uh, each 30 pitches with a five minute break in between, uh, averaged 88.5 miles an hour on his fastball and topped out at 90. Um, and so, you know, he also threw his cutter curveball sinker and go-to change up. He's 37 years old. Uh, and so, you know, he's up there in years, but there's a guy that we're going to hear his name in the, in the near future, uh, yep. signing with some team somewhere. Who will it be? I got a, I got a feeling that, that uh, the Cardinals may be interested in Cole Hamels. Yeah. It's kind of one of those, why not, you know, bring mm -hmm. him in one year, see what he's got. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's why, I mean, that's why so many clubs are interested, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's, and, and the future's bright. I don't want to sound all doom and gloom with the Cardinals. I think the frustration is you could have been more competitive this year if you had done, which is backseat general manager looking in the rearview mirror, but right. we'll see it this, and I'm not joking this 2022 off season for the Cardinals. And I don't even, I don't even like looking past this year, but right. it is going to be the most interesting off season. The car I think I've ever seen next to yeah. the pool holes off season, because right. you, you have to think about is Yachty going to be back again? Not only because we had to deal with that this off season is Yachty going right. to be back. Is Wainwright going to be back? That's number one. Number two Andrew Miller, Kwong Wong Kim, uh, Matt Carpenter, Dexter Fowler. Uh, uh, the list goes on and on of players. I think Harrison Bader's close to being up. Uh, you have some guys who didn't perform well. What are you going to do about that? Like, what are you going to do about Paul DeYoung? What are you going to do? Tommy Edmond has, hasn't really been playing. I think his on-base percentage is below 300 now. Um, what are you going to do to improve the club with all of this money that you have coming off the books, which is about 70, $80 million. Yeah. And are you going to choose which direction are you going to go in? Are you going to bring Yachty back? Are you going to bring Wayne right back? And what do you choose to do uh, with right. that money? And it's going to be really interesting because it would make some sense. And this is why I would lean. If now uh, my position's kind of changed a little bit where it, I, I, the Cardinals, I could see them trading away guys with expiring contracts right. just to get right. something for them because why not? You, it like, and you can sell your fan base on look at all this money we got next year. Right. Like, we are going to bring, right. like, we are going to do something with this money. Plus, right. we're going to 
stockpile all these prospects that we could potentially trade, make trades mid season, or we could just develop them. And these will be the next generation of Cardinals. It's exciting. You know, it's really, yeah. really exciting. Um, so I think the future is bright for the Cardinals and even, you know, the Cubs. I mean, it's not all doom and gloom. I mean, if you make the right trades for these, you know, I mean, I, I'm sure White Sox fans were probably ticked when they traded Jose Quintana away, but I think they got Eloy Jimenez in that deal, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So that's turned out to be a pretty good deal for them. Yeah. Yeah. Eloy Jimenez, imagine if we had him now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Uh, but again, we were trying to do the dynasty thing, which is really difficult to do in Major League Baseball uh, yeah. right now in any sport, really. Um, you know, with with the way that contracts work and how people can move around and all of that. So, so here's what I I propose. I propose that well, first of all, for our listeners, our our subscribers, uh, the people who are watching our show and listening to our show all the time, come join the community. Pick a side. Uh, either, you know, are you a Cubs fan or are you a Cardinals fan? Let us know in the comments. Which one are you? Um, we want to know who our, who our watchers, who our listeners are. Just a little comment in there. You know, let us know. Like us. Subscribe us. Uh, tell us how we're doing. Uh, and then I, I propose that over the next three days, four days here, uh, we just do real little b- uh, brief recap episodes of the Cubs-Cardinals series because we know how key it's going to be. Uh, moving forward and there's going to be a lot of news happening here at the end of July yeah you want to get on tonight after the game I don't know if you're going to be yeah. up are you going to be up well uh maybe tomorrow morning maybe tomorrow, tomorrow morning. morning all right yeah we can yeah. do that we can recap tomorrow morning because I'm going to watch the game tonight gosh tomorrow I don't think I'm going to be able to watch it I think we got something going on but yep um I will watch what I can so yeah let's do that Let's do that. Yeah. I'm yeah. for sure going to watch tonight. So, uh, yeah. yeah, let us know what you think. Um, whereas, us... not to interrupt you, but whereas I'm going to listen to every single one of the games because I'm a Cubs fan. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think I got stuck filling in for volleyball tomorrow night, but it might not be until 845, so I might be able to watch yeah. a good part of are you it. you defensive specialist? What are, what are you? In volleyball? Middle hitter? Middle hitter? Oh, I don't. I just go for the ball, man. I don't. We, it's not that formal of a game. Like I think we're we're just in a rec league. We drink beers no. while we play, so it's not uh, yeah. anything too crazy. Although we did get booted out of the recreational league up to the mid tier league because we were too good. Ooh, I thought that was wow. weird. I thought that was weird. Mm-hmm. No, we, they had this weird round, round robin at the beginning, mm-hmm. and we just. Like our first game, we won 21 to 19. So I don't know what they were talking about. Like, but then the next couple of games, we won pretty handily. Yeah. So, and then we got the email. Like they sent our team captain the emails, <laughs> like, yeah, by the congratulations, you guys are, you know, they formed it like, oh, it's some kind of celebratory thing. Right. Uh, but it's like, yeah, we're kicking you guys out of this. And because you're too good to play with these people. And now you're, now you're the cellar dwellers of the next level. Or yeah, or, I don't know. <laughs> I guess I guess they've. I'm not an official member of the team. I just fill in when they, when they when they need somebody to fill in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, but yeah. Anyway, we're. I don't know if we're, they're the cellar dwellers, but they're definitely. It's interesting how these rec leagues work, man. Maybe so. I'd, I'd take so. Adam Wayne. I'd pay, I'd take Adam Wayne right on my slow pitch team. He, yeah. I bet he'd be oh, yeah. pretty good. Yeah, Matt Carpenter. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Oh, he could. It. He can you imagine? He he has the perfect swing. You know who has the perfect swing for slow pitch? Who's that? Uh, Jim Edmonds. Yeah. Yeah. I bet I bet Jim Edmonds could play slow pitch softball until he's like eighty years old. Yeah. Yeah. Like he just. Well, we got he, we got a we got a guy on our rec league team. I don't know. If he's batting cleanup. Junior Lake. I don't know if you've heard. <laughs> <laughs> oh hey if tyler if tyler o'neill i mean if he didn't make it as a big league player he'd, he'd be a heck of a slow pitch player too yeah yeah, yeah absolutely but all right well hey looking looking forward to the game tonight yeah and uh glad glad you text me to well i knew of course you had forgotten that the cubs and cardinals were going to be playing this week i knew 
I well, I, I just looked at my better. phone. I was so excited that they won two out of three <laughs> to <laughs> twice, once leading up to the break. And then it's funny yeah. how the, the symmetry of that worked, right? Where the Cardinals mm-hmm. played the Giants and the Cubs leading up to the break. And then they're playing the Giants and the Cubs. Anyway, that's weird. Yeah, uh, yeah I agree. But yeah, I was I just agree. so excited about, you know, who they were playing right now that I'm not looking ahead, you know. Some teams, yeah, I don't know. Some teams like look ahead on the schedule, maybe circle some games, whatever. You know, I, I think every game, you know, I just look at it individually and then I'm like, oh gosh, like, okay, the what Cubs are today. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm not saying like some teams do that, but th- I think some teams do that. It's like a little circle on the schedule. Like this yeah, game's more, this game's more important than the other games, even though it's like the same. I've never understood that phrase. I don't know about you, but this is like a circle, the calendar game. Like this mm. one matters more than the other games. It's like, yeah, no, it doesn't because it still counts as one game. Every game matters. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. I, I guess, I don't know. Maybe your division counts more, but whatever. Uh, so yeah, anyway, uh, if you haven't already, click the like button, subscribe to the channel for more content. Click the alarm bell to get notified when we have more videos posted because like we said, like we just came up with uh, extemporaneously on air here, we're going to recap game by game this series because this is the season, ladies and gentlemen, this is leading up to the trade deadline going to determine whether the Cubs are sellers or buyers, whether the Cardinals are sellers or buyers. So it's ultra important. So we're going to have thank a lot to talk about in the upcoming weeks. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So thank you guys so much for watching. And, Mike, do you have anything else to that you want to say at the end here? Let's go Cubs. Let's go Cardinals, baby. Let's get the W tonight. See you guys later.